be great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Hassan, and thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, since the Occupational Health and Safety Administration was created in 1970, deaths and serious injuries at work have come down by 65%. Even so, more than 3 million people are seriously injured, and more than 4,800 workers are killed every year on the job. OSHA's budget is so tight now that they have only enough people to inspect workplaces in America once every 150 years. Uh, that's why deterrence is so important. And one way to deter companies from cutting corners and endangering workers is to hold employers who violate safety laws personally accountable for the deaths of their workers. So Mr. Mugno, if you are confirmed to run OSHA, Will you commit to pursuing criminal penalties, including jail time, for employers who willfully violate health and safety laws and end up killing an employee? Thank you for the question, Senator. Uh, if the circumstances are right, the elements are met in consult consultation with the Solicitor's Office of the Department of Justice, yes. Uh, okay. And I have talked to the Secretary about that, and I know that he feels the same way under those circumstances. I, I think it's very important. So another way, let's talk about another way to deter companies from taking dangerous shortcuts on worker safety is to publicize fines and penalties. Now, during the Obama administration, OSHA issued a press release on an inspection if it resulted in violations and penalties over $40,000. OSHA issued about 400 press releases a year based on their enforcement actions during the Obama administration. After President Trump's inauguration, OSHA stopped issuing these enforcement releases almost entirely. In the first 10 months of this administration, OSHA has issued just 36 of these releases. So, Mr. Mugna, will you commit to reinstating the deterrence policy of issuing press releases for major violations? Thank you, Senator. So, being a nominee, I'm not sure what went into the decisions in prior administrations or the current administrations, but what I would do is once confirmed and in there, I would consult with those career experts as to what the criteria is and why do they do that and how do they do that. Wait, I would be I'm, interested in finding out where we set that. Mr. I do agree that communication of these types of events has an advantage in others knowing what's happening out there. And so I think that's why this is critical and to find out what the right criteria is. Mr. Marginal, I'm not asking about what's the policy of others. I'm asking about your policy. Surely you have thought about this. You're asking to be confirmed in this role. And I just want to know your policy, how you see it in terms of publicizing when employers have uh, been found in violation, significant violation of health and safety laws. I understand, Senator. And what is your policy? And again, I think communication of these types of items is so valuable your policy, to you will commit then to publish this information? And again, I'd like to find out what the, 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 the uh, elements they are to use in order to make the threshold. You yourself mentioned that there was a $40,000 threshold before. I'm sure there was a one before. And those are the things I want to learn about should I be. So you have no the, policy other than to learn the policy of others? Uh, so companies that skirt safety rules should be punished to the fullest extent of the law. But companies that hold federal contracts paid for with taxpayer dollars should be held to an even higher standard. Mr. Mugno, do you agree that the Department of Labor should not contract with companies that have violated health and safety laws? I believe that, thank you for the question, Senator. I believe it's important to look at what those violations are and what the criteria for those are on that sense. Is that a no? It is not a no, sir. Is it a it's yes? Not, it's not. Senator, it, it's about looking at what the, what the uh, whole context of that employer is about in that situation. The, the whole context of employers who violated health and safety laws and that those employers should still be eligible for federal contracts at the Department of Labor. Again, again, I believe that the criteria there is very critical as to how that works. So let me ask another question. Will you commit to informing the agency's contracting officers 
of all OSHA violations for the companies that the department contracts with. Senator, I don't know how that's done today, but I would certainly look worth looking into. Should I be confirmed and get in there? I'm not asking is it worth looking into. I'm asking if you will commit to at least give the information to the contracting officers that those companies are in violation of current health and safety laws. And again, Senator, I just don't feel I have enough facts. So I take to give that as a that. no. Thank you.